Okay, I just uh, got a great question on um, uh, the meaning of life in relationship to the ego and, um, and karma and reincarnation. And so, what, what, is, what is karma? Karma, you could say, in a simplistic level, are your beliefs. And, uh, you know, you could say karma, the unconscious, and your beliefs are all the same thing, you know, because uh, that is the that is the load that that you bring to it. What are you What are you experiencing in this moment? Well, in this moment, you're experiencing your karma. You know, like um, how how uh, how resentful you're feeling, how fearful you're feeling, how identified with your body, any lack of freedom. Um, so that's all related to your belief systems or your unconscious. So let's say um, I don't like, I don't know, let's say uh, if I had a belief system like, I don't know, I don't like rich people, for example, a prejudice against rich people, then, you know, it would be like every time that could be one of, that, that would then be part of my karma, you see. But that would be one of my belief systems. So every time I see a rich person, I'd feel angry, or, or whatever it is. You see, so I have a loss of peace every time that happens. And it's, you could say that, so, or I could be like, um, I could have a prejudice against old people, myself included, as I'm getting older. So then that would mean that my, I'd have a loss of happiness and peace and presence every time I see an old person or I think I, I'm looking old. You see, so this becomes all the things that create unhappiness and pain. Or I could have a, like a karma around money, belief systems around money. Like, uh, I can, I'm allowed to feel happy if there's a lot of money, but if I have no money, uh, that's bad, and I don't like people with no money, and I like people with uh, a lot of money. So that's part of my karma, my beliefs, you see. So then it's like, you know, if I see a poor person, I haven't got much money in the bank account, then suddenly it's like, you know, there, there is fear or anger or a loss of peace. So this part, now, so that's the karma. And as you let the kar karma, these belief systems go, then it, you know, there's a sense of happiness with money or without money. There's a sense of happiness old or young. There's a sense of happiness whether I or other people are rich or poor. You see, it's like the sense of happiness because you're transcending, you're letting go, you're forgiving, you're letting, surrendering, you're letting go of these ideas that happiness is dependent on this or that happening, or, you know, or <clears throat> belief systems like if the country's economy is doing well, then I can be happy, if the, everyone's losing their recession. I'm, so you have to let, let all of this karma go. Or relationship karma, you know, I'm only happy with people who are faithful to me. Uh, but if someone's cheating on me, then I can't be happy. So that's also part of the relationship karma or something. So as you let go, and with karma, it's, it's like the um, the universe, because there's a greater karma. There's single. There's my karma. There's group karma. There's country karma. There's global karma. We're all connected. So it's like you tend to meet the people who are going to reflect as a mirror uh, your karma, or you know, the lessons. Or we could say the lessons that need to be learned. So, if I take on more negative, if I take on more belief systems, then, you know, it's going to it's going to create a heavier load, and a greater sense of disconnection. And if I thank you, if I um, so, so at the end of a life, you could have either either used that lifetime to release stuff, surrender stuff and get that sense of peace or stillness or beingness or oneness from within, then if you haven't let it all go, you tend to reincarnate into the next lifetime because there's still more work to be done, as Buddha would say. So you're back in, but you have less stuff to deal with and you're going to be happier because you've let go of a lot of the stuff and repressed feelings. And you keep on doing, like Buddha, I would agree with Buddha, you keep on doing it until you reach the state of enlightenment or oneness or beingness or the infinite state, or the timeless, or the eternal state. So then you've actually transcended, you know, form, or duality, or your belief systems, and you've connected to a sense of self, 
an infinite uh, state of beingness or presence. So there's, no, there's nothing there to pull you back in to these cycles of pulling you back into a life because you've transcended it. You can't hook into something you've unhooked from, if that makes sense. So you wouldn't really, you know, once you've transcended something, if you transcend my dualistic positionality around rich and poor, then I can't get hooked into that any longer, you see. It can't be tested on you. Even if a rich person and a poor person comes in, I wouldn't notice it because I've transcended that. So, um, so that's the thing. And, you know, the, a lot of the Course in Miracles, they say it's like a school. So we just keep learning the lessons until we've learned the lessons. And you could say this, I keep, we'll coming, keep coming back to this school until I've learned all the lessons this school can teach me. You know, which is, means that there's nothing in here that I can get hooked into. You know, I'm going to retain that level of, of experiencing, you know, the enlightened or the non-dual or the presence, the oneness or the beingness. So, you know, that can't be shaken. While you can still be re-hooked into it, you haven't transcended it. So the lessons keep coming back, you see. It's like, or it could be like in relationships, you know, it's like, I keep choosing people I think can save me uh, and rescue me. So, you know, if I keep that belief system alive, I'll just, this one didn't save me or rescue me, I'm going to choose that one. And then that one hasn't rescued me. I'll keep doing that for lifetime after lifetime until the day I go, actually, th these people, no one can rescue me. It's, it's an inside job. Then, you know, that I won't need to come back. You know, if, I, if I've let go of every single belief system, you know, about everything except for one last idea that a person can rescue me, and I'll keep coming back just for that idea, you know, because there's still this this world has something to teach me still. I'm still looking for a person to save and rescue me over and over again until, hey, I let the idea go and I realize, hey, I don't need someone to, and then I don't need to come back again. You see, or you sort of transcended it in in, in that way. So, so yeah.